All right, welcome back to another edition of Live from Red Hook. We are here at the Function House, and tonight we want to welcome a very special guest, DJ Dennis Ferrer. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, welcome hey, to hey, the what's show. going on? Thank you very much for having me. It's been an honor. Appreciate you coming, man. Well, it's not your first time here, right? Where? In Red Hook. No, 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 not at all. I, I, I was here when before it became an, a very nice place to come to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's regentrified. Uh, yeah, it's quite different than I remember it. You know, um, I don't have to duck behind you know cars. And <laughs> <laughs> so when was the last time you were actually here? Uh, yeah, probably the late nineties, right? Wow, man, maybe the early two thousands was the last yeah. time I was here. Wow, you know, except when I went to, uh, you know, I was just here like to eat not too long ago. That lobster pound. Yeah, that, exactly the lobster place. But before that. It was like, yeah, well, you need the PAL, you know, the boxing, the boxing PAL league thing. And yeah, that was kind yeah. of a hot spot back yeah. there. Well, listen, thank you for coming down. We appreciate this. Oh, thank you. So you're born in the Bronx. Yes, sir. So born and raised. You, you're born in the Bronx and you're a house music DJ. Mm -hmm. it's like, so were you ever into hip hop at all? Oh, you had to be, man. Um, uh, it it kind of started back in the early 80s uh, when my next door neighbor, a friend of mine, Peter Morales, um, his brother did a long bid. <laughs> and uh, it always starts that way, you know? Somebody does a bid. Yeah, he did a stretch, a long stretch. And he had SOB1s, I think they were. Yeah, SOB1s with it was like basically rubber bands on the turntables, man. And uh, that's how you really learn. Yeah, that's how you learn, man. And, and he inherited those decks. and. Um, he started with all with his brother's collection. He started bringing in all these other records and going to record stores. And then I would come in some days and try to learn how to spin and battle him and listen to all these cuts. And um, you, at, in the '80s, you know, it wasn't just hip hop. You weren't just a hip hop DJ. I mean, you played everything. You know, you played from Chicago house to hip hop. You know, to slow jams. And, and at a party, on a block party in New York. Anything went down. You just didn't know. You know, it was just a moment thing. Feel, feel the moment kind but of the, thing. But the Bronx was a great place to grow up back in oh, the yeah, 80s and because and of the park and all that. The music scene uh, was incredible. Was you break dance also? Yeah, uh, the yeah. Whole culture like, came from the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you had to. Uh, you know, uh, it was crazy. But but I remember those days because I mean, it was just a lot of fun. You know, you would roll up the, walking down the block near Jerome Ave. You know, and you hear music and somebody's house party would be going on, you know? And uh, you just rock up to somebody's house party and, and there'd be beer in the, in, in the bathtub and somebody's mom had made rice and beans and pork. And, and you just, and you know, the decks, were, the decks were spread out across the kitchen, you know, like from the kitchen entrance, yeah. right? So somebody's dining room table doubled as like the, where, where you put all the decks on. So, you know, and you had all the B-boys up near the steam, you know, trying to be cool, yet they were sweating because it was, like, really hot in the, in, the, in the living room. Everybody moved the furniture to the bedroom. And, um, yeah, it was like I lived near 167th in Germany, Yankee Stadium. It was, it was crazy. It was, it was so you amazing. You went to a lot of Yankee games? Yeah, as a kid, you had to, man. It's like it's a pilgrimage, man. Four. Don't even start. I'm super excited. Go Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me get ghetto here. I'm like, ooh. So what made you gravitate towards house music? Um, I really don't know, uh, to be honest. Like I said, Peter was playing, playing all these records. And um, one day, he started bringing in um, some Silk International records. I mean, it's not Silk, uh, DJ International records, sorry. DJ International records. And um, I got caught up, you know? And then tracks, he bought, he bought some tracks records. and. I mean, that was the first time I heard, you know, the house music anthem, you know. Um, and then you instantly got the bug? Yeah, I mean, I know, it was like instant, dude. It was like boom. But then, you know, you had, you know, Tanya Garner with, you know, Heartbeat. Yep. And, you know, and everything on, on, on West End also, you know. And that was a big New York thing, you know. Uh, so I just, I caught the bug and, and that was it. I was in, you know. And I kind of strayed for a bit because, of course, you know, as you get older, you, you, your tastes kind of change, but your core value is still there. So I went into hip hop, and then I did techie, and then I went back into hip hop, back into house. And um, that's why I'm kind of in the middle. You know, everybody says, well, he, can, he does techno and house. Yeah, because, I mean, that's my roots, basically. Yeah. And you've, you've, you've actually touched a bunch of genres, right? I yeah. mean, like from the Afro house yeah. to like gospel house. So, so what, what is it about just crossing over to all these different genres for you? 
you know, I think it was Carrie. I, I learned I learned something from Carrie um, Chandler. I'm sorry, Carrie Chandler. It was sort of a principle like if you're going to do something, do it right. Do it as authentic as you possibly can. Don't don't kind of fake it. You know. So when I heard a, a, a Afrobeat record, I wanted to do the drums like Tony Allen. So I would listen to Tony Allen's drums. You know, and Jerome kind of put me on that Afrobeat thing too. So when I heard those drums, I want I want to write like Tony Allen actually plays. You know, and so I think that was the biggest thing. I. I I was looking for inspiration from multiple sources where, you know, my brain, my brain was like a sponge, it still is, you know, because I never stopped learning. So if I hear something new and I think I can incorporate it into what I do or where I think music is going to head, head to at the, at the current climate, um, then I'll try to do it as authentically as possible. You know, I mean, that's part of your learning process too, trying to break down and figure out how somebody did something, you know? Yeah. And so I enjoy doing that. My, my biggest thing is like, how can I challenge myself you know, constantly? Because you, 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 know, you get bored. You know, your, brain, your brain just, it just gets bored doing the same constant thing. So you always want to challenge yourself. And I find that by changing styles and um, changing genres sometimes, I mean, that's how I challenge myself. Well, I think it's it's kind of like synonymous. I'm going to compare you to say like a Billy Joel in like the style of his music, where obviously your music's different than Billy yeah, Joel's yeah, yeah. music. I wish but, I had Billy Joel. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like the way he, you know, he has so many different styles of music yeah. that he sings. He's a musician, and that's interesting about the the tracks that you've produced is that you know they're not always the same sounding. Like you'll have different sounding tracks. Yeah, that's the thing about me. I mean, I heard. <laughs> I heard something really funny. It's like either you like them or you don't. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, and, I, and I have to admit that I, I'm very, if even for myself, when I listen back, I'm like, wow, what was I thinking? You know, okay, that was a that's a strange one, but it's kind of cool. But I, that's my thing. I, I kind of want to shock you. I mean, it, it's easy to. I wouldn't say easy. Let me let me rephrase that. It, it's like par for for the course to do normal records, you know, to, to get into a genre and say, okay, I fit in. I don't necessarily want to fit in all the way, but I do want to fit in in some sort of way, but I still want to be able to say, hey, this is me. Yep. And, and I've, I'm quirky like that. I think we're all kind of quirky, but it comes through in my music a lot more so than most people. So you have countless hits. What was that one hit that took you to that level? Or maybe you were looked at a little different after it, after it blew up? You know, everybody likes to point to Hey Hey, but Hey Hey was the commercial success. And that I but shied away from. It must have had a big impact on, the, on your career. Yeah, but it was a negative impact. How so? Um, OK. The other records that were not as big as Hey Hey, but made noise kept me a bit, I wouldn't say grounded, but, but I was still okay with purists. When Hey Hey came along, um, Average Joe, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but they expected more like that. I was never going to do another Hey Hey. It's just not, it was, and I tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, who got it right was a reviewer on Resident Advisor who had reviewed Hey Hey. He said, don't be surprised if he just dis track yeah. like this ever and he disappears. He got it right. He got it right. He was right on the money because for, I don't know how he knew who I was or knows, knew what I was going to do mentally, but he knew that. And I think if you want to go that route, if, if I wanted to go the hey, hey route, I could have went that route. I could have made those things all day long. Let I me ask you a question, though. When you made that track, did you think that that track was going to cross over? It wasn't, it wasn't a crossover record to start with. It was actually an underground soulful house record right. when, it, when it first came out. It just started speeding out. We, we, we started selling on, it was on first on Objectivity. And we, we sold the heck out of that record. And then I licensed it to Defected, and Defected took it around with it. Now, it's not a bad thing. Right. It, it's it's one, of, one of my biggest records, if not the biggest record. Um, I, I can't lie. But it doesn't define who I am. It never did. 
It was just sort of like, hey guys, here I am. Hi, how you doing? I can do this, but I'd rather do that. Does it put more pressure on you? After I did the record, I really didn't have pressure. I think pressure came now. Reinventing myself yet again. Because we have a whole new cast of characters. Right. You know, we, we have a whole new, like, we got new football teams, like I like to say. Yeah. And they're all rocking right now. Yeah. So my, the re-education of Dennis Ferrer is what's the hardest. Because I've always been able to change with times. You know, and that's what I'm doing yet again. And that's what I like to do. I mean, I love to do this. This is, this is what I live for. I, you know, I live to make records. Whether it's, whether it's jazz house, soulful house, whatever kind of house it's going to be, that's where I want to be. Because I like to make dance music. That's, that's, I want to make people dance. I live on that, that feeling. I want to drag that emotion out of you. you know? And I want to see your hands in the air. When you play my record, when somebody plays my record in a club, I want to say, oh, that's my joint. See, I, I live for that. That's how I get fed. What is your personal favorite record that you've made? Ones that people will never hear. <laughs> <laughs> you must have tons of stuff in the computer. Some garbage on that computer, man. If you, if, you, if, <laughs> if you ever went through that hard drive, man, you'd be like, what the hell? And see, that, and, and that's the thing. I believe, personally, that you shouldn't put out everything you make. Right. But yet, there's a lot of people out here that every week, they're just like, bam, 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 bam. And I've got a hard drive that shows you you shouldn't put out everything that you make. Because if you hear this stuff, you're like, what the hell? But that's part of the experimentation process. You know, Some records that I've done, uh, they were on my hard drive for seven years before I said, now's the right time for that record. You know, So yeah. So the stuff, that, the stuff that you don't put out, do you still play when you're out? Or it's like just sits there? No, nah, I just sits there. And people get mad at me. Sometimes somebody will come over and be like, yo, you should put that record out. And then I'll double think it. I'll rethink it, sorry. And I'll be like, hmm, maybe he's right. Maybe she's right. Maybe it, it is the right time for that. And it also depends on what I'm hearing out. I'm hearing other people play out also. Do you put stuff out on other labels? Strategically, yes. Um, uh, I'm pretty strategic and pretty picky about the stuff and where I put things out, I, th I think to a fault almost, you know, because in, in the older days that worked, but since the, the record business has changed, maybe it doesn't work, but I have old habits and, you know, they die hard. I'm still very picky. So if I feel I need a record on a certain label because I feel it will further an idea that I have or a profile, you know, profile-wise, it should work, yeah. Yeah, I do that. Remix is the same idea. You know, you're picky for remixes because, listen, you know, you need a certain look or, or a certain profile bump. You know, I don't, I don't just go, hey, hey, whatever. Yeah. You, um, you got nominated for a Grammy, correct? Yes, sir. What did that do for your career? Nothing. Really? It's just a nice plaque on my wall. It means nothing. Accolades mean nothing to me. Doesn't mean I make more money. No, it's just, it's just nice to look at, and it's a nice talk piece. It's a great accomplishment. It is. You know what the great accomplishment is for me? That I'm still doing this. That I, sti that, that, that I can still hang with all these young kids. I'm, you know, I'm getting up there. And that's my accomplishment. The fact that I can still do this. Listen, I want to do this till I can't hear anymore. You know, that's, that's the accomplishment for me, because I live this. This is what, I, I don't do this as a hobby. I don't do this to impress anybody. I do this because it is me. It's inside of me. It makes no sense otherwise. So a plaque on a wall will not, it's not going to impress me. It's not, I doubt it. You know. It's to feel a little good though. It was nice when I got it. I mean, I won't lie. I mean, I was like, I got nominated. I mean, Carl Craig called me up and he was like, yo, actually he texted me first. He was like, yo, D, you got nominated. Congratulations. Like, what is he talking, what the hell is this brother talking about? What? Like, nominated for what? And then I'm like, Oh, okay, this is nice. But I knew I was going to lose that. I mean, you know, you had David Guetta and you had Skrillex. I was like, ah, oh, you know, that's whatever. But even but, to be in the class of these guys being nominated, I mean, it's... it's well, what I can say is this. What I, I can be proud that I got nominated not for trying to do something any different but being me. 
And that's what I feel proud about that. Because I, I didn't change. That record is pure Dennis. If you listen to that Dido remix, that's Dennis Ferrer. That's, it shouldn't even, it's not even a commercial record. That's just Dennis Ferrer. And that I can say is like, you know what? Okay, that's cool. Because if I would have gotten nominated for some bullshit, I'd have been upset. <laughs> <laughs> so your label, Objectivity. Yes, sir. What, who's on the label? What young people are you searching for? Who, who, okay. you, who are these people that are coming up? Um, Objectivity is a, w was basically sort of not a pet project, but sort of a, a place where I felt comfortable in putting out things that I knew weren't normal. You know, they're not really normal. Um, like, it's not, it's, not, it's not everyone's cup of tea. You know, I wanted to be a bit different um, after Sphere. And I've always looked f f not for big names. If you look at Objectivity's roster, there's really, all those records aren't big names, really. I mean, the biggest name we ever had was the Local Dice remix. I mean, let, me, let me think back for a minute before. Yeah, it's only the Local, local Dice remix. Um, and so, I kind of treated the same way I used to treat vocalists. I never liked to make records with big vocalists because I thought it detracted from the actual record, the actual song, the actual music. Um, I've always felt, let the music speak. I don't care who you are, just let the music speak. And so I feel the same way for objectivity. And, and Andre Homan, who's our label manager, has done it the most excellent job. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so proud of him, he's amazing. Um, with the label, and uh, that's that's our that's our whole thing, you know. We don't we don't really want huge huge names. We just want the music to count, you know. You guys sort that out later when everybody's dead and gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. If you call it a classic, it's a classic. So, are you involved in picking out everything that comes out on the on the label? Yeah, I mean, for for I took I took a brief hiatus maybe uh, since the beginning of January to the summer season. Um, I just needed to refocus my whole being, basically. I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, uh, a lot of, th lot of stuff, you know, life happens, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, you have a big Ibiza season coming up, and, you know, you kind of lose focus sometimes. And so Andre held the, held the fort down, you know, until now. And, yeah, but most of the time, it, it's still, it's still got to run by me, and I still have to say yes or no, yes, yay, nay, and I listen to the demos. But now I'm more, I'm more involved in it. Yeah. So are there any new, young, up-and-coming DJs that, you're, that, ha that you have on your label or that you're, you have your eye on? Oh, man, there's tons. Um, you know, Nasser Baker is an amazing talent. You know, he's, he's just coming through now. I mean, he's, he's making amazing records. Um, I, I think he's one that you're going to have to look out for. He's going to be scary right now. I think he's, he's one to watch out for. Uh, CJ Jeff is also another big talent. Um, Andre Holman has always been a talent, you know. He, does, he doesn't get his accolades, you know, and, and I think he's, he's the most amazing DJ ever. It's like he's incredible. Um, and um, I think those three guys right now, and John, Jonathan has been doing an amazing job with records for us. I mean, he just did a remix, he just did a new remix for us, but I think it's David Meyer. David Manor's re remix. Um, these four guys for us have been rocking right now. Rocking, just rocking. So how do people get music at you to, to get it onto obj Objectivity? Well, it's very simple. Uh, demos at Objectivity.com. Um, okay. Don't be mad if we take our time answering. There's like 250 emails a day, and we're, it's only two of us, really three of us, you know. It's actually only three of us right now. Um, so it takes a while to get back to people. But how crazy is it that there's this much music? I mean, there's, there's oh, so there's much tons, music. There's tons of music. Like, how do you even decipher whether or not you're going to take a track? It's just, it's just so hard right now. I th you know, I'm, I'm looking for a lot of different records right now. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want our records to be A to B records, like I like to call them. You know, I, I, I play enough of those A to B, you know, get me from A to B or the drum loop records. I, I kind of want some interesting stuff, you know. Um, I think it's about time we start hearing some good, you know, records that people actually want to sing along to from, you know. I mean, I miss those, quite honestly. They don't have to be commercial. They just got to be good sing-along records. It's, there's, there's like no classics coming along, 
I, I haven't had a classic. I can't. When's the last time you heard a classic? The music is very quick, in and it's out. Quick, yes. Yeah. Man, I miss a classic. I mean, I, I remember we, I'm not to, not being nostalgic or anything. I mean, but I remember when you, you you got a record in January, February, and that record, if it was rocking, it was a classic. Used to be playing it throughout the end of the season till just the first week in September to the closing parties. Yeah. So how are you staying on top of your music? Oh wow! I mean, it's, it's, there's no shortage of promos. I can tell you that much. <laughs> and, and promo subscriptions. Um, it, it's 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 not easy. People think it's easy to stay on top of your music, but it's not because I out think of, it's the hardest part right now. Dude, out of four thousand records, man, you might get in a month. I mean, maybe twenty you play. Sure, you got thirty other ones that are A to Bs, but you know. When you're going out and you're playing, um, do people expect you to play some of your big hit records when you're playing a party? Oh, here we go, Kenny. Kenny this one's for you. <laughs> Uh, Kenny's always saying, D, play your records. D, play your records. D, play your records. I can't do that. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't do it purposefully. It's just, I think uh, there's some subconscious thing saying, don't suck your own dick. Excuse my language. But <laughs> it's the internet. I, 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 I'm just saying, you know, don't do it. So I, I, I don't believe in, you know, doing it to myself. I figure, you know, there's, thousand other people playing my records why do I need to play it you know I, I, I don't mean that in a bad way I'm just saying I get so much beautiful new music that I love to show that I kind of don't want to revisit it although I should I have to admit that I really should and maybe it's not cool since people have do pay to come and see me play but I don't know I, I think there's so much other great music maybe maybe when I get older we'll do a, a legend tour you know a Dennis for a legend tour because at this point in time I think I can play about two hours of my own records <laughs> so maybe I'll do that, a live show that's got to feel great though to know that you can play that much of your own music of good yeah. relevant tracks mm. well that's what you're gonna do tonight right uh, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> So I, I got a serious question for you. Sure. Up until this point, is there one thing that Dennis Ferrer would change in his career? Or anything, any, like from your past, is there one thing that you would change? Hmm. Maybe the color of your car? No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's marine blue, no, no the color's amazing. <laughs> um, what would I change? And it's okay not to change anything. I, mean. I, I can't say I'd change anything because even my with all my faults, they were all learning experiences. And I think without those, I mean, you're not living life. So would I change anything? Nah, man. Nah, it's been a good life. Even now, it's still a good life. Look, man, I get to make records for a living. I get to play records for a living. I get to get drunk every weekend <laughs> for money. In a different country. Too. In a different country. You think I want to change? No, I don't want to change that. <laughs> Y'all are crazy if you think Good I answer. change that. Well, Good it was answer. funny because they asked Jay-Z this question. Would he, rap, would he be a rapper or play for the Yankees? And he was like, he'd rather be a rapper. He wouldn't want to play for the Yankees. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how about you? I don't know. I'd, I'd pay, I'd, I, I wouldn't mind being Aaron yeah, Judge right man. now. <laughs> That's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I wouldn't mind being Aaron Judge right now. I mean, mm, I don't know. That's a tough one. But still, even with all of that, that, that's a lot, a lot of pressure, and I don't get that kind of pressure. I get an easy, I get to do what I want every day. So I'm, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, y'all. I'm good. I'm good. Dennis, thanks for coming down, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very looking forward to the set. Ugh, really? I'm going to take a two-minute break, and we're going to get Dennis up on the decks. Peace. Peace. Peace.